Hey Lambotters, I'm Judith. Welcome back to some monthly Lambot updates. Let's dive in. First one, a new native Airtable integration. Airtable is an easy to use online platform for creating and sharing relational databases. It's simple, colorful, and friendly. It's like a nicer and more fun version of Google Sheets. Let's take a quick look at the blocks configuration. First, we will connect the Airtable account. We only need to give it a name and insert an API key. After that, we can select the base and table where we want to operate. Once it's done, we can choose the action. There are four types for that. Add a record, get a record, get multiple records, and update a record. I'll quickly show you each one of them. To add a new record into your Earth table, you have to select the Earth table field and the value that will be passed to the field, which can be a static value or a variable. You can set up as many field value pairs as you want. Here, we can see how a new record is created in our table with the values stored in the bot. Keep in mind that this block is now in open beta. Once the beta is over, it would only be available for professional plans or higher. The second one, get a record option, is the one to use when you want to just get a single record from a table. If you want to get multiple records from a table at once, you should choose the third option. You can save these records as arrays and display them as buttons autocomplete or picture choices using the dynamic data block. Finally, we have the option to update the record that lets you update a single record's value. Up next, a new lead scoring block. Lead scoring refers to assigning points to leads based on how relevant they are to your goal. For example, how likely they are to purchase your product. Before, you could only implement lead scoring with conditions and set variable blocks. However, it was a very hectic and repetitive process you'd have to set up something like this for every question asked. And it can be long and time consuming to build. That's why we came up with the lead scoring block. Now you get all of that in one block. Just add the lead scoring block at the end of the flow after asking for all the useful information and inside set your preferred scoring. For example, if you want to target users that are older than 18, you can check if that variable fulfills a condition you have defined, assigning a score to that role group. Additionally, you can add more rules involving other variables and at the same time check if the user's budget is greater than a specific number or if their email contains a specific string of characters. The block will save the variable in the number format. After the block, you can filter the scoring with the condition block. This way, you get different flows depending on the scoring. Cool, right? Next up, flow analytics improvement. With the flow analytics section, you can analyze your web bots to check the conversion and drop-off ratio from each block. This information is important to analyze the bot's performance, so we're excited to introduce some improvements. As before, the information is divided into two groups, block-by-block -block conversions or the percentage of users that, when reaching that block, follow each path. And the second one, block drop-off metrics. Red arrows show the absolute number and the percentage of visitors leaving the flow at that specific point. And if you hover over any arrow, you'll see the absolute number of visitors that have chosen that path. What's new here is that now you can check the flow analytics within the bricks, which wasn't possible before. And if you use the jump to block in your bot, you can click on it in the flow analytics section and you will be redirected to the flow analytics section from the bot builder. Have in mind that it's not compatible with jump tos within the same bot. It's important to apply date filters to avoid conflicts between different versions of your bot in case you make any changes. Next one, as you know, two brains are better than one. We've added a little section in your dashboard where you can see all your teammates and add a new one. It's also possible to add a team member from this icon in the bot builder. So you can invite your colleagues and get second opinions to create awesome bots together. Next up, new segment integration. With Segment, you can track users' events and what is happening inside your bot. Segment has a large list of destinations to connect with. Well, we will not enter in details. Just so you know, it has two types of methods, identify users and track users' actions. And please bear in mind that this integration requires technical knowledge. And lastly, media improvements. We've released a small but very requested improvement on how we visualize uploaded media. Now we display videos and audios of supported formats directly into the bot interface. All unsupported formats will open in a new tab or directly download, depending on the file type. PDFs, for example, will open as a model by clicking on Open File. 
The text of open file will be customizable in settings, custom system messages. Also, when we upload media in the builder, we'll see an icon in the media block showing the media type, if it's a video, audio, or any other file. We also added the option to embed videos from Vimeo and Wistia. So that's it for this month. Hope you enjoy our new features. See you around.